Welcome to the Dr. Rebecca Baxt podcast. I'm Dr. Rebecca Baxt, board certified dermatologist, and I'm here to discuss with you all issues relating to the skin that you're in. In this podcast, we tackle the topic of the day fast and get you the take home points you need so you understand the issue and are ready to either fix it or ask the right questions at your next dermatology appointment. Let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about acne basics. Acne is a giant topic, and today we're just going to do an overview. I will do other episodes on some specific acne topics, such as adult female acne, lasers and lights for acne, but right now we're just going to do overall acne. So acne is a condition that affects most American teenagers and many adults. Boys tend to get it worse as teenagers and often outgrow it, although not always. And girls and women tend to get it worse when they are adults, although, again, not always. I've seen acne in seven-year-olds. It is becoming younger and younger. There's also baby acne, but we're not really going to talk about that as that just goes away usually pretty quickly. But teenage acne is extremely common. It's usually on the T-zone of the face. It can be on the chest, the back, the shoulders. It tends to be a lot of clogged pores, blackheads and whiteheads, and also some pustules. It can become cystic. That's when people get red, hard cysts. And the cystic part is when it can turn into scarring type of acne. Again, this can happen to teenagers or adults. Most people with acne tend to have oilier skin, but some people with acne can have sensitive skin, combination skin, even eczema and dry skin. And that is going to be more challenging as most of the things that we use for acne are drying. I'd like to spend some time going over things that you can do if you are a family member or suffering with acne without seeing a dermatologist or a doctor, focusing on good habits and over-the-counter products. The first piece of advice that I have is not to scrub or pick. There's a lot of acne products out there that are scrubs, apricot scrubs, other scrubs. They're often bad for the environment, but they're also bad for the skin. They can be very irritating, and then it's very hard to tolerate the creams and gels that we need to help improve the acne, so I do not recommend scrubbing. Acne is not a dirt problem. You cannot scrub it away, so I recommend staying away from scrubs. In addition, picking is bad. We know this to be a fact. If you pick at your skin, you're just going to be digging at a bump, and it may immediately remove that bump and somehow give you some satisfaction, but It's just going to create a hole and then your body has to heal that hole and that creates a scab which potentially can cause scarring because we've disrupted the surface of the skin and can also just take a really long time to heal leaving a purple or red or brown mark. So picking is just not a good idea at all. So now that we've established that scrubbing and picking are bad for acne, what is good to help treat acne? on the face or the chest or the back or the shoulders that is available over the counter. The first chemical that is a great one to look for and use in the acne section of the drugstore is benzoyl peroxide. And maybe it's written on the front, but you also may need to look at the back of the bottle and look for something that has a benzoyl peroxide wash. It comes in two, five, ten percent. Ten is the max, ten is the strongest, the higher the percentage the more drying it will be. Um, In addition, benzoyl peroxide can bleach things, not the skin or the hair, but it will bleach fabric. So if you don't get it all off when you've used it, um, it can bleach your towel, your shirt, your pillowcase. So I recommend using a benzoyl peroxide wash with your fingertips in the shower or the sink. There are people who are allergic to benzoyl peroxide, up to 5 to 10% of the population. So if you're using benzoyl peroxide and you're getting very red or irritated, that is somewhat common and obviously it needs to be stopped. But for those patients who are not allergic to benzoyl peroxide, it's an absolutely fantastic chemical for reducing acne because it kills bacteria and it also unclogs the pores. Benzoyl peroxide also comes in a gel, and that is something that you can use overnight. Again, reminder, it can bleach your pillowcase or your nightshirt, Um, but that again works the same way. It kills bacteria, unclogs pores. So if you're not allergic to benzoyl peroxide, it's a great option. It's available over the counter. 
Another great chemical is salicylic acid, available over the counter, usually in half a percent, one percent, two percent. The maximum over the counter is typically a two percent, and it also comes as a wash or also often as a spot treatment. And it works incredibly well. It doesn't bleach anything. It can sometimes be a little bit drying or irritating, uh, but most people can tolerate it. So especially if you can't tolerate benzyl peroxide, salicylic acid is a good other option. Um, Neutrogena makes a good one. It's their good old fashioned orange salicylic acid cleanser, but there are other brands as well and spot treatment will work as well. Sometimes there's salicylic acid lotions, um, but a good combination would be a benzyl peroxide wash once a day, a salicylic acid wash once a day, a benzyl peroxide gel in the evening, and you could use a salicylic acid as an additional spot treatment if needed. Another great option is over-the-counter differin or retinol. Those are retinoids, they are low level retinoids. For stronger retinoids, you do need a prescription, but we do have over the counter retinoids. Retinoids help the skin cells turn over more rapidly. So they help the pores unclog and that's how it reduces the acne. So they do make you a little bit sensitive to the sun and facial waxing, and they can be a little bit irritating, but the over the counter versions are usually pretty well tolerated and they're available really everywhere. And I do recommend usually doing those in the evening, although Differin could be used in the morning, Retinol should be used in the evening. And you would want to start it slowly. So I usually recommend twice a week, Monday, Thursday, increasing as tolerated to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then potentially attempting to do it every single day. But retinoids can make you purge, so they can bring out a lot of the clogged pores from underneath and actually make you worse before they make you better. So I usually recommend to try to start very slowly to prevent that from happening. If you go very slowly, it shouldn't really make you purge. Another option is really just to use the other chemicals first, get better first, and then add a retinoid. But reminder, be careful with the sun and facial waxing. You would definitely not want to be using retinoids if you're going to be in the sun a lot. And also the week before you wax any part of the skin that you're using that on. Some people wax their eyebrows. You could use threading or plucking instead if you don't want to have to worry about it or just be careful where you're putting the cream the week before you're going for a waxing. One of my favorite chemicals for treating acne is azelaic acid. It is usually available as a prescription. There are some over-the-counter versions. They're a little bit harder to find, but that's a very nice chemical because it does not make you sensitive to the sun or waxing. It does help kill bacteria and unclog the pores. So if you can find some azelaic acid, um, that can also be helpful. So you could use one thing in the morning, one thing at night. A lot of people will use benzyl peroxide at night because they don't want to get it on their clothing. And you could use different in the morning um, or alternate between different and azelaic acid. Really, those are the best chemicals that are available over the counter for acne. Another bit of advice would be for acne patients to use oil-free products. Oily products do not usually work well on acne prone skin. However, people can get dry, especially from the products that they're using, or they may have dry skin and acne patients should use something that is oil free. So I just want to touch on what we do when a patient comes into the office with acne, because there are so many other options rather than just what's over the counter. So if you or a family member or a friend is suffering with acne, which is um, likely because it's just such a common condition, um, you know, get to see a dermatologist. A good board certified dermatologist is really an expert in this area and should be able to help you if the over the counter things are not working well for you or a family member. So, when people come to see me, we talk about other options. So, prescription creams, there's many different varieties. I will often put people on oral antibiotic pills. They work to kill bacteria. They also work as anti-inflammatories. Those are very good in the short run. They're not great for a long run solution, but they're very helpful for a lot of people, such as doxycycline or minocycline or others if needed. Uh, we also discuss for women hormonal pills and, and girls, women and girls, hormonal pills such as birth control pills or spironolactone. Spironolactone is a blood pressure medication that's used off-label for acne in women and girls. It does work very well. It has 
some side effects. We'll do a deeper dive into that when we talk about adult female acne on a separate podcast. And then we also talk about Accutane or isotretinoin is the generic term for Accutane, which is the only thing that we really have that cures acne permanently. And it is a cure for a majority of patients. It does have a lot of side effects. I think I will also need to be going into that in a different podcast, but just an overview. When I see people in my office for a consultation, usually they have failed over-the-counter things, and we are talking about prescriptions, creams, pills, Accutane, hormonal medications, and those are all great options. However, there are people who can't tolerate a lot of those treatments for various reasons, or they don't want to take those treatments for various reasons. Um, They don't want the chemicals, they can't tolerate the side effects, whatever it may be. And there are other treatments that will help acne, and I'd like to touch on them briefly. There are lots of lasers and lights that work for acne. Um, I have the Smooth Beam laser, which is a very old laser that's FDA approved for acne. It works incredibly well. The few of us who still have them love them. Um, They are not that widely available. There have been a few other new lasers that have been approved for acne recently. They all work on the same mechanism as the Smooth Beam, which is the damaging of the oil gland. It tends to be temporary, um, but those lasers work well. There's also Isolase, which is intense pulse light with suction. It is an FDA approved treatment for acne. It works well for some patients. Um, There's also photodynamic treatment, which is not FDA approved for acne. It's actually FDA approved to treat precancers and skin cancers, but it's been very well accepted as a treatment for acne, an alternative treatment for acne. It works very well, particularly for people who have red angry acne and cannot tolerate the other more traditional treatments. Um, There's also Sebacea, which is sort of a very small niche market for mild to moderate acne. Um, And then there's chemical peels. We do a lot of chemical peels for acne and there's many different types of chemical peels that work for acne. They basically help exfoliate and it helps unclog the pores and fade the marks. So there's a lot of alternative treatments for acne that work incredibly well. And we have all of those available in our office. Many dermatologists do a lot of these different things. So if you're somebody who cannot tolerate all the traditional things, there are alternatives. So in summary, acne is a very large topic, and this is just an overview of acne basics. I tried to give some advice for over-the-counter things such as benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, topical retinoids, topical azelaic acid for home use. We always recommend no scrubbing, no picking. There are lots of prescriptions available that can help with acne for girls and boys, men and women, Um, And there are a lot of alternative treatments as well. So if you are suffering with acne and over-the-counter things do not work for you, get yourself to a board-certified dermatologist who can do a full consultation and try to help you. Acne can really be a very debilitating condition. While some insurance companies and people think of it as superficial and cosmetic, it can really affect mental health and bodily well-being and I really support full treatment of acne to get it under control so that it does not affect someone's quality of life. I always tell new acne patients that I can definitely make them better. It usually takes me often about three to six months to get somebody's acne under control. Sometimes it's quicker, sometimes it's even longer than that. The only thing that's truly a cure is Accutane, but not everybody needs that. There's many ways to make acne better so that it does not interfere with somebody's daily life. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Dr. Rebecca Baxt podcast. I'm Dr. Rebecca Baxt, board certified dermatologist. I hope this episode was informative about the skin that you're in and that you enjoyed listening. If you found this podcast useful, please give us a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. It helps others find us so we can help them too. Just a caveat to remember, this is not medical advice, and please see your dermatologist or doctor for questions pertaining to your specific situation. I look forward to talking to you again in the next episode.